it's Pete from Perfectly Reasonable Necessities again. This time around with a uh, a review on a Philips air fryer. Uh, we're going to go through all the features and benefits uh, of owning one. The links for it will be uh, below in the comments down the bottom of the uh, the video there. With air fryers, they're convenient. We all want healthier eating, and the other thing we don't want is to have to deal with the oil at the end of the day when we're shallow frying or deep frying chips. Some of us do, some of us don't. And I particularly like the health factor and the zero environmental factor, if you will, uh, trying to dispose of used oil after you've fried a batch of chips for the family. The um, most of them are either black or white, and um, they they weigh a bit, but they're not too bad. Uh, they're still in the cupboard after they've cooled down. Um, so what we'll do is I'll bring the camera just a bit closer. So what we've got there is the air fryer from Philips. Uh, it's got a temperature control just here. It goes up to 200 degrees, which for most fan forced ovens is what temperature they recommend for cooking most items. Now in this, what I've cooked is mainly chips, or for our American viewers, French fries, um, or steakhouse fries. I've done chicken nuggets in here. You can also get recipe books as well from uh, online sources and uh, it will give you the recipes to be able to do things like cakes and muffins as well um, you can only fit a few maybe four inside with in a silicon tray um, so the way they work is you just pull that out of that and then you've got a Tray. It's it's metal. And it's covered with a heat resistant coating. The basket clicks out from the button there, like that. Almost dropped it. <laughs> and that's what you're left with. So, and again, that's metal as well. These do get quite hot, so it just clicks back in like that. So easy cleaning. Um, we use ours quite a bit, but you can see there, there's the element that it uses to heat the air. And on the back, there's a, um, there's a vent that is there like that. So that's where all the hot air comes out. So you just gotta make sure that they're underneath the range hood, uh, or at least in a ventilated area when you're using them. Now in the back here, you can see me pushing there Move that out of the way. Pushing the cord in. So it's got a hollow in there obviously for the cord pick up. So that way when you're storing you're actually taking less room up rather than having a cord dangling around you grab the pots and pans as you pull out. And you can see the cord is quite lengthy. So you're not really restricted with how many power points you've got around the place. You can unplug the kettle and plug this in instead for the time that you're cooking. Uh, this top panel here, there's a little warning just there. I don't know whether you can see that. If I do that there on the camera, it just means that surface gets hot so you can't touch the top of it. Um, on the side here, and I'll just pop this cord back in, there's a couple little pictures that you can see with some really cool diagrams on it. Now, in addition to cakes and things you can do, Things like meat, if you want to air fry or air bake meat, just like you would do in a everyday fan oven. So you've got basics there for meat, chicken, your cakes, all that sort of gear as well. So it's actually quite a handy little, handy little quick reference guide there on the side. Now on the, so on the button here, 
I haven't bothered to take the sticker off, you can obviously. Um, but uh, it's just to let you know that be careful because if that drops out, the uh, it can dent the it can dent it. So with the amount of chips and things that you can actually physically put in these things, um, I've been able to put in enough to feed myself and the kids. So myself and two kids, um, which are fantastic. Like I said, Phillips is a really, really good brand name. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't fail. It hasn't failed me yet. I've had it for over 12 months and we've probably used it uh, countless times. So the timer uh, on there is pretty easy to read. And there it is there. Again, sorry for the, we use it a lot. So some of the, some of it is a bit unclean, but it's okay. That's what we use it for. So basically when you, when you use it, obviously make sure it's unplugged when you're messing with it. Plug it all in and plug it into your nearest power cord. And just make sure you follow the directions on the, on the unit for um, temperature controls or the recipe that you're following at the time. Again, like I said, really, really lightweight, easy to store. The footprint on them is really, really, really narrow. Uh, now on the bottom, which is really cool, they've got these anti-skid feet. You see there? So when you put down a counter, it takes a really good buffer to hit them off, but they definitely don't, don't slide around. Now on the bottom also it's got the, the model there, and this one here is a HD9216, which is the same as the model that I've got on the on the website and on the perfectly reasonable necessities uh, Amazon store, as far as the, the associate links are concerned. So what we'll do now is we'll set up some probably some chips and I'll show you what that looks like and then we'll set it all up, turn it on that way you can see it running and all that sort of Right, so here's our bag of chips or fries as you want to call them they're basically just straight cut and we'll get these opened up and pop them to the So I usually just guesstimate, but what you can do is on the inside of the container, there is a fill mark. I'm going to find it. And it should be just, I don't know if you can see that, maybe not. There's a fill mark just there, it says maximum on the, on the inside. So let's click it in. So that, that put as many as I can really because up to the maximum is quite a few chips. Um, let me put those there for the minute. That's what they look like in there. Just make sure it doesn't exceed that top rim basically. Because uh, if it does it'll uh, get in the way of the fan. So just plug it in. And basically, you're good to go from that point. So what we'll do is we'll just pause again, we'll get it set up. And, uh, and then that way we can show you how easy it is to um, get going again. So, yeah, we'll do that. Rightio. So we've fixed that up. It's all plugged in and ready to go. Now, theoretically speaking, say if, if I turned it right down like that, the adjustment is just this here. All the way up to 200. Alrighty, and the packet on the back says we've got to put it on um, four. What is it? Is. What is it? It says bake for 24 minutes 
So what I like to do is I normally like to look on the side here just to double check things and it says that your chips you got to put them on for 18 minutes first take them out give them a shake and then reset for another 25 so what we'll do I normally don't like doing it that long so because I don't like my chips very crispy so usually I just usually put them on for about 18 minutes and that's as noisy as it gets Yeah, it's coming up back there, as you can tell, man, quite close to it. And this is just a laminate bench top that we've got it on, and just here. So, um, yeah, it hasn't, it's never heated up the laminate at all. So, uh, there's, because all the heat's coming out the back and dispersed through the top here. But, uh, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll come back uh, when it's about halfway through, and we'll show you what to do then. Alright, so we're back again and we're about halfway through so I'm just going to give you a look at what it looks like which is about there, I've got to care because it's hot. It doesn't they look like about halfway through. You can see them starting to brown. So what you got to do is just give them a shake. Just back and forth like that. That's how they're tossed around, moved around a little bit. Just pop them straight back in. And then you leave them for the rest of the game. So we'll come back in probably about seven or eight minutes time and we'll show you what they look like at the end. Alrighty. So we're all done. And this is what they look like. All done. Very hot. So what I'll do is I'll just pop those back in there and we'll get a plate and you can pretty much as long as I might move that just out of the to be careful it's quite hot Just move that to there like that. In a bowl there. Get across. Now you don't want to touch anything because it's still too hot. Get a few on the bench there. That's okay, you can see how that would be a couple of people's serves worth of chips. Again, it is very, very hot, guys. So, um, pretty much, uh, this will cool down on the stove top because stove tops are coolest or the most heat resistant area. Again, don't touch the insides of the unit. And even when moving it, you shouldn't move it that quickly. So that's what they look like there. Again, does the job more than more than well. And again, you can actually touch the sides of the unit, just the sides though. Um, it's not overly hot. So if the kids do bump it, it's it's. Um, it will get at least give them a shot anyway before uh, they burn themselves. Other than this, obviously this area in here is very hot. And again, just leave it on the bench, let it cool down. Um, run some warm soap and water into the sink, and just when you're cleaning them, you can't submerge them in water. Just make sure that uh, you don't submerge them in water, because submerging them, there's some electronics near the handle that you can actually damage if you're not careful and obviously the main chamber where the pot goes uh, with the food in it you don't have to actually physically um, clean because it doesn't come in contact with the food at all 
So we hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, again, the links for the uh, Amazon affiliates are in the description box below. So please click away, have a look. I've also got the affiliate links on our website and there'll also be a blog coming up about it as well. So we hope you like it. Please subscribe and, uh, and like the video. And that's it for today. We'll see you again shortly.